Kauai campers. My name is Sarah. My name is Grace. And we're here at beautiful Camp Kauai, just outside of Waterloo, Ontario today. This is your third installment of Nature Facts. Today, Grace is going to teach us all about animal tracks. I'm so, so excited. But before we get started, we want to begin this video by acknowledging that we are meeting on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples from the beginning. As settlers, we are grateful for the opportunity to meet here and thank all of the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Long before today, as we gather here, there have been Indigenous people who have been the stewards of this place. In particular, we acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and this is the t and this territory is covered by the Upper Canada and Haldeman Treaty. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place. We also recognize the contributions First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous people have made both in shaping and strengthening this community in particular, and our province, and our country as a whole. As settlers, this recognition of the contributions and historic importance of Indigenous people must also be clearly and overtly collect connected to our collective commitment to make the truth and reconciliation real in our communities and in our camps. Hey Grace, do you want to sing a song to get started? I'd love to. Since we're learning all about animal tracks today, why don't we sing about squirrels? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> all right, this is not a repeat after us song, but I trust me, you're going to follow along really quickly. So, ready? One, two, three. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Put a peanut in your hand and shove it up your nose. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. I love that song. Should we do it one more time? Yeah, let's do it again. Okay, one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Put a peanut in your hand and shove it up your nose. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, Grace, what do we need for this video today? So, for this video today, um, you need to get Plaster of Paris from your local hardware store. It's only about $8. Uh, you'll also need a disposable cup that you can mix it in just because it'll harden to whatever you're mixing it in so you don't want to put it in like a bowl from home. Um, and then you'll want to use um, anything disposable that you can mix it with, a stick, a popsicle stick, or a plastic spoon that you can throw it after um, for activity at the end of this video. So some things that you will be helpful for when you're tracking is if you have a tracking book, or if you can get one from your library, but you can also just use Google to search as well, and there is some apps that you can use as well. Um, so there's a few different things that make certain tracks by different animals very distinctive. Um, so when you're searching it up, um, a way to find out if it's that track is, it'll tell you what the track width is and height and stride and trail width. So also if you bring out a ruler or tape measure, that can also help you along the way. So what the track width is, is it's the whole width of the single um, track. So right here we have like a dog, a dog track right here. So it'll be from the wide, like the furthest part out to the other side there. So right here is that is the width. That's what you want to measure. And then the track height or length is from the tallest part here to the lowest part right there. And for the trail width, it is the width between um, where they are walking. So this is their whole trail width right there. Um, and then we have the stride as well. And the stride goes from the front of one track to the front of their next track. So right there, that is the length of their stride. So there is quite a few different species of animals that are grouped together. So first we have the canine family and their imprint is more of an oval shape. 
So some examples of canines are coyotes, wolves, foxes, and dogs, like domestic dogs. And then our next one, we have felines. Felines make more of a circle um, imprint. And when they also make an imprint, their claws don't register into the ground as canines do. It'll show up in their print. So, <laughs> um, so for felines, some felines are cats or lynx. And the next one we have is musculids. <laughs> Um, their imprint is more of a circle, but it's very deep imprint. So they're, um, in their family, it's a fishers, martens, otters, minks, weasels, skunks. Um, most of those, the majority of mustelids are both water animals and land. So they can easily go in between living in the water and in the land. Um, and then we have rodents. Um, their imprint that they make is right here, the big circles, that's their back feet. And then at the back here, that's their front. So when they're moving, their front, their back feet register first, and then they always, they're pushing off underneath them. So that's why their front feet are behind them. So some rodents are squirrels, uh, chipmunks, beavers, muskrats, mice, voles, groundhogs and porcupines. Um, next we have ungulates. Ungulates um, have like a hoof shape. So that is your deer or your moose or any elk. Um, and then we have lagomorphs. And lagomorphs are just like rodents, the way that they um, move with their back feet registering in front of them. And, but their, their feet are a lot bigger because lagomorphs are like snowshoe hairs, cottontails, European hairs. So they have a lot bigger feet than compared to a squirrel. So each, um, each kind of species has their own baseline gait. So the gait is what the animals, how they travel. So this is a diagonal trot or walk. So the way that you've seen either like cats or dogs walking, where they're just walking with one foot in front of the other, that is the diagonal um, trot or walk. And canines, felines, and ungulates walk like that. Um, and then we have a lope, which is what the muscula does. And they just are kind of like, it's kind of like they're bouncing across. Um, they land their feet in their previous tracks. So that's why it's kind of like a two by two. And then the next we have is a bound, which rodents and lagomorphs do. So for the bound, you see that this um, is registering just like from the lagomorphs and rodents, the way that their back feet are in front. And just how I was saying before, that's because they are pushing off underneath them and just kind of hopping along. So there is um, all the canines. It's when you look at them, you'd be like, I don't know if this is a dog or a wolf or a fox. Like <laughs> they all pretty much look the same, but there's a few key features that'll help you distinguish the difference between them. So um, for the wolf and dog, this is their print. So their toes kind of like point out more and they're more spread out. And for the coyote, their toes are more like pointed together and even their claws will be more like inwards where dogs out, oh, wolf and dog. And then for the fox, a very distinct feature is that they have this triangle, uh, yes, triangle part right here. So um, with their bed of their foot and then their toes pointing out, it's like a very distinct triangle marking in there. Yeah, so those are some things that you that are very helpful to know when you're trying to distinguish which tracks you're looking at. Um, I recommend getting this book here, Animals, Tracks, and Signs. It's all North American species, and it is so much information of where you can find all of the all of the animals around, and it shows even all of the gates in there as well. So this is my favorite book. <laughs> okay, so for activity, we're going to make making plaster animal track castings. So 
what you want to do is you want to go out and find um, a track so you can go out into any woods that are under your house or in your backyard or you can even use if you have like a pet you can um, when you're taking them for a walk or something um, if they leave a track in the mud then you can um, cast their track with the plaster as well or you can even make your own track for this demonstration we have made our own track um, just because we don't have too many animals roaming around camp at the moment just because it's a bit busy so how to make the plaster <laughs> casting is you will need the plaster of Paris, which I mentioned at the beginning. It comes in a huge thing, so you can use it for so many um, tracks and maybe other crafts as well. So the mixture for this is two parts plaster to one part water. Um, and you want the consistency to be just like it's pancake batter. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So, and you want to make sure that you're mixing enough plaster for the track in question. So we're going to pour in some plaster, just a powder, have some in there, and then we're going to add the water. So there's some water in there, we're going to mix it. So it is a bit runny, so I'm going to add some more plaster into it. It's super important that when you start mixing this, you're going to be ready to pour it into the track just because it dries within 10 minutes in the cup. So this is kind of the consistency that you want. You want it to be pretty thick. So now that we have that all mixed, we are going to head over to our track and pour it in. So this is our track right here, so I'm just going to pour it into the track, make sure we get everything covered. Like we can smooth out the back just so it's a smooth, um, smooth on the back. Perfect. And then we're just going to let it sit. Um, you can leave it for half an hour to an hour. Um, you can kind of feel the back to see if it's dry after half an hour, if it still feels a little wet, then you can just leave it for longer. If it's in a safe place like your backyard where you can leave it, you can also leave it there overnight and come back to it in the morning. Um, once you take the uh, plaster out, you can either dig it out or depending on what um, it is in, if it's in sand, it's really easy just to pull it out. Um, and then once it's totally dry, um, usually after about a day, then you can run on some water, um, take an old toothbrush and kind of wipe away all of the dirt. So we're just going to let this one sit here for now and then we'll come back to it in half an hour. Okay, so we waited half an hour for our plaster casting to dry and this is what we have here. There's still a little bit of dirt in it, but we'll just have to wash it off and it'll be pretty clean there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grace. I learned so much in this video about all the different kinds of tracks that you can find and how to uh, plaster tracks. What a cool activity. Thank you for teaching us. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for joining Y Camp today. If you're enjoying Y Camp, please subscribe and consider making a small do donation to your local YMCA. If you're working towards your Y Camp badge, please visit ymcahome.ca slash Y Camp and tell us all about how you did this activity today. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye, Bye. campers.